Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everyone? I am. Um, welcome to In the Garden with Joyful Living. Trying to get some stuff situated here. I am Kimberly Dixon and welcome to this Saturday's edition of In the Garden with Joyful Living. Thank you all for joining me. Um, we'll give it just a few seconds to see who is going to uh, chime in with us this morning. So what do you guys have planned for your Saturday? I am um, going to do what I do every Saturday morning, which is I'm going to go work out after I get done with this broadcast. And then uh, I have a busy day of packing, so I'm getting ready to move. But while we're waiting for a few people to join us this morning, I'm going to go ahead and start the tour of the garden. Well, no, you know what? Actually, I'm going to wait because um, it ties into the topic that we're discussing this morning. So um, please share the video. Where's everybody at this morning? Gosh, did you guys have any bad weather on yesterday? Um, we had a tremendously powerful storm that rolled through here. I was sitting in traffic and hail uh, started to fall that was about the size of a dime. It was, I'm glad I was sitting still because it was raining so hard that we uh, couldn't see like right out of your windshield, let alone uh, to the car next to you. But we're going to go ahead and get started. So today's topic is pressure. You know, we all feel pressure in our lives. And as you can see, here in North Carolina, the weather has been kind of strange. It's May. And last week, we had days that were in the upper 90s. I'm talking about 97, 98. So close to 100 that it might as well have been 100 degrees because it was hot. Well, because uh, it is so hot so early in the season, see my tomato and my roses, and my uh, bell pepper, the cucumber, and the zucchini plant, everything is showing signs of distress. And it's because of the extreme heat. They are feeling the pressure of being in the heat so early in the season. We normally don't have temperatures of this degree until maybe late June, July, August. And then the plants start showing the kind of distress that they're already in. And it's just May. So they are feeling the pressure. They are feeling the heat. As you can see, some of them didn't survive. That was a marigold plant. That was my plant, Delilah. Um, and it was a beautiful yellow plant, but she is gone now. But you can see some plants aren't showing any evidence of distress at all. The bell pepper is still vibrant, strong, and looking healthy. The other plants, not so much. This is the cucumber. It is really uh, showing some signs that the heat is too much for it. Now, the same thing happens to us in life. Some of us, we are on, under pressure, so much pressure every day. And some of us are more resilient than others. Some of us are like the bell pepper. We are very resilient. We withstand the pressure. Good morning, Yolanda. Other of us, others are a little bit um, less hardy and they start to show signs of distress early on. In our personal lives, I'm going to turn the camera back around now. Our pressure shows up as work. We are either we have a job where we are constantly on call, we are unemployed or underemployed, so that it causes pressure. And then we have pressure in our families. Um, you ha are questioning the relationship that you have with your spouse. I'm sorry, I need some water. Or it's an abusive relationship, whether that's physically, emotionally, or any other kind of way. And then you have your kids. And I'm not speaking to all kids or all relationships, but they're disrespectful, disobedient. Uh, they may be having issues in school, um, the curriculum or with bullying, drugs, sex, and the list goes on and on. Then you have uh, pressures in our personal lives, excuse me, of homelessness. Then we have issues with our health. Some of us are pay facing high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer. Um, unknown diagnosis where we are just sick and nobody knows why and we're going back and forth to the doctor that is pressure and under the pressure we start to crack 
But I'm coming to you this morning because I want to tell you one thing, and that is in order for us to handle the pressure uh, in our lives, we have got to act. So uh, I'm going to read James 2, 14 verses 24 uh, to you. Bear with me just a minute. It's kind of difficult to hold the camera and hold. This is what happens when you don't have a cameraman. I apologize, guys. But anyway, it reads, what does it profit my brethren if someone says he has faith but does not have work? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but do you not give them things which are needed for the body? What does it profit? Good morning, Freddie. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But you, but, but do you know, <laughs> but do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? altar. Do you see that faith, faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone only. Good morning, Angel. So that simply tells us that in order for us to handle the pressures that we are experiencing in our life, we got to act. So often in life, we become exasperated and we throw up both of our hands. In doing so, we settle and we stay in the undue pressure and we say that we are coping or we're learning to live with it, but in actuality, we are suffering. So in order for us to deal with the open, the the, the the pressure in our work, whether that's overworked, underworked or um, un, underemployed, excuse me, or unemployed. That means you got to act. You got to look for another job. And that means relentlessly it, it, because today you can't walk in any HR department and get hired on the spot. In most instances, it is a lengthy process and it can take time. Good morning, Kerwin. Kerwin. With your family, that if you're having pressure in your relationships, that means you're going to need to have a, a conversation with your spouse or your significant other and see is this ref, a re, relationship something both of you are willing to fight for. If it's not, you need to go your separate ways. But if it is something that you want to uh, fight for, then that's the time for you to work, whether that's through getting counseling, going to marriage retreats, uh, uh, reading books, learning how to communicate with each other. We all have a different style of communication and not everybody understands the same way. Good morning, Lori. So if the relationship is something that you are feeling the pressure in, it's going to take your work to make it work. It makes take two people for a relationship to succeed, but it also takes two people for it to fail. And get in, uh, as far as you're feeling the pressure with your child, get involved with what's going on in your child's life. As parents, we want to be uh, the person who provides for their needs, but we also need to be the person who is present in their lives. That means showing up, showing up at their school, showing up uh, at their social events and their sporting events. But it also means when they're trying to push us away, that's when we stay the closest. So when you're feeling that pressure from your family, you have to take action on it. And then when uh, when it comes to issues of pressures where you're facing homelessness, we still have to act. Or even if you're actively ho homeless, that it means inquiring about services that are available for you, whether you're going to a, a shelter or a soup kitchen, inquire, asking people, hey, do you need some help? Uh, what kind of services are available to me? Where can I go to get assistance with uh, finding a job or assistance with ho housing? A lot of times, and I'm not saying this is true in every situation, but a lot of times we get frustrated and we won't ask any questions. But if you start asking questions, then guess what? You're going to get some answers from somewhere. And then when it comes to your health, make a decision that you're going to do the things necessary with your diet and your uh, exercise that are going to change your health. Uh, when you go to a doctor's office, the first thing they're going to do is prescribe medication for you. 
But this is something that I know for sure. Medication isn't meant to cure anything. It's meant to treat. So and over time, all of that medication, it does damage to other parts of our system because it's made with chemicals. Your body was not uh, meant to process that stuff long term. So when it comes to your health, you got to take action on it. And that action is through exercise, through diet, uh, through um, meditation and stress relief, because stress, it leads to so many uh, illnesses and ailments that we uh, think we're handling things OK, but we're not giving our body the proper rest and the proper sleep. And this is one thing that I know. And I had this conversation in my Bible study group and with another person on yesterday. Whenever you have a major illness or a major uh, d disease or surgery or anything like that, after even if you recover, something is not uh, regained. It takes something out of you. I don't know what it is. It's like you can uh, bounce back from the surgery and be feeling better, but something you don't you don't get back from it. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Every obstacle we face in our life, it, it has the um, ability to push us to greatness or, or or we can use it as a stumbling block for our entire lives. Good morning, Tara. But the decision is up to you. Actually, last night I was at Authors and Arts for the so showcase with J. Dwayne Garnett, and he talked about the challenges that he had faced in his life, as well as Michael Jenkins. Uh, he talked at the end that these young men shared stories in their life about molestation, um, being kicked out by parents, death, love, the whole gamut of things, and how they use that to push themselves to victory. So in our lifetime, we can use those pressures that we face to push us to victory or we can use it as evidence or as an excuse or justification. Good morning, Kim, as to why we stay in the situation that we're in for the rest of our lives. So when we're facing those pressures, it's up to us to take that action that is going to allow us to move to the next phase of our life. Now, last June. I went to actually to Authors and Arts again for a poetry reading and I was going to be one of the vendors there. So I just thought as for fun, I would do a um, spoken word piece. And so today I'm going to share with you two of those pieces that I wrote uh, last year because they talk about the pressures that I faced in my life that most of the time nobody knew anything about. But instead of using those uh, of pressures as justification to stay stuck in a situation that was literally suffocating me and killing me. I chose to use them as something to push me to greatness. So I'm going to share with those. I haven't um, recited these since last year, so I do have my paper with me in case I uh, forget it. But the first one is entitled From Darkness to Light. And um, we'll get some water first. From darkness to light. My life was never easy. Legs so bowed I couldn't learn to walk. I tripped and I fell. I landed on my face a lot. I ate a lot of dirt. That's okay. I like the way dirt tastes anyway. My, my journey taught me what it means when people say he walks with me and he talks with me. He makes everything okay. Mama, I need you. I miss you in my life. If only you could see me through your darkest of nights. Every child needs their mother, but you have so much pain and grief, you can't even see me standing right by your feet. My journey taught me what it means when people say, he walks with me and he talks with me. He makes everything okay. They came in like a swarm of bees, touching and grabbing me, pulling me down beneath the sea. You tried to take my dignity, but guess what? I'm sorry, let me back up. You tried to take my dignity. I still see your faces snaring down at me, but guess what? You can't have me. My journey taught me what it means when people say he walks with me and he talks with me. He makes everything OK. My conversations with God, I call them conversations because you see, I promise you, he talks back to me. My conversations healed my soul of all my wounds. Darkness is everywhere, but it's not really real, you see. It's a fallacy, an illusion. It's not real to me. Darkness is simply the absence of light, and that light is already in me. 
God planted light in me before I was ever born. My life is not a punishment, but that of a chosen one. My journey, though painful and heartbreaking, built up something in me that is undeniable and unshakable because that light, he resides in me. The next piece is entitled Royalty. People knew me for my bow-legged stance. The swagger in my hips made man and woman stare. Women wanted my bow-legged stance. Men wanted to lay on hands. But no one knew the secret of my stance. The pain in my knees had me grit my teeth in my sleep. The arthritis that came at the age of 12 destroyed my knees and shoved me into a dark, dark well. So much pain, so much pain, so much grief. But the world only saw the swagger in my hips and the stance of my feet. Day after day, week after week, year after year, the pain slowly ate away at me until one day the person sitting on the couch was a shallow, empty representation of me. The physical pain made me want to cry and scream. The emotional pain slowly tipped away with me. The spiritual pain was absolute worse. Yep, surely God had forsaken me. But then one day I had a dream. I saw a tiny red bird with big, giant blue wings. That bird was different. It was special. It was unique. There's not another one in the world. And in my dream, God told me that bird represented me. I wasn't forsaken. A seed of purpose was planted in me. God sent me to the world to spread joy, love, and healing. To hone my craft, God said to me, my dear child, you must suffer tremendously. God made me like a Tonka truck. I'm built to last. Nothing can destroy me. I've been through the fire, hmm, and it didn't even scorch me. Darts fired on every hand. Miss Dixon, you need another surgery. Surgery number one, surgery number two, surgery number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, I'm okay. Shake, shake, shake it off. I know my purpose now and nothing can stop me. Eyes have not seen nor ears heard nor entered into the hearts of man the things that God has for me. He covers me. He protects me. He loves me. Everything that the canker worm of pain and the locusts of the feet had eaten up is being restored to me. Today, the truth of who I am stands before you. I'm a warrior. I'm a queen. Don't you recognize royalty? Those two pieces talk about just a fraction of the pressures that I felt in my life. And the thing I want to really reiterate that with is the fire and water are two of the most destructive forces in nature. However, fire purifies and water cleanses. It's up to you how you use your fire and your water. Putting gold in a furnace brings the impurities to the surface. And what you end up with is a brick of gold that is indestructible. You can use the fire that you go through, the pressures that you go to, to make you indestructible, or you can allow them to destroy you. Take the pressures of your life and allow them to make you unbendable, undeniable, unshakable, undestructible. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Um, again, um, I don't think I announced at the beginning, but for the month of June and July, I am running a, fa a fundraiser on Facebook because I am sponsoring, working with the Boys and Girls Club in Raleigh, North Carolina to a, do a book signing with Kalea Irving on July the 15th. Kalea was born with 2% of her visions, but she has spiritual uh, visions and um, grew up in uh, foster care, had a really difficult story starting out. So she's been touring the country, sharing her words of, of hope and wisdom as a 12 year old little girl with other children. And so we want to be able to give the girls and boys at the girls and boys club here in Raleigh, her book for free. So I'm going to place the link uh, for that fundraiser in the comments so that you guys can contribute to that. 
the books cost ten dollars each sponsor one book two books and if you don't have that give a dollar two dollars every dime goes towards sponsoring books for the children and also because I believe in this so passionately 50% of all the sales for my t-shirt joy is my birthright will go towards sponsoring uh, books for the youth so please contribute to those get a t-shirt um, be an active part of our com a community the youth really are our future and the things that they are experiencing in this world today is like nothing i've ever seen before so we want to make sure that we give these children some hope so um whatever you have to contribute it, uh, each donation is greatly appreciated it will sponsor books um again don't let the pressures in your life bend you shake you break you they are all designed to build you into something that is indestructible so that you can fulfill your purpose in God. Guys, thank you for watching this morning. This has been In the Garden with Joyful Living. I thank you so much. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.